I'm Gemma Lonsdale, psychic medium and life coach, and you're listening to the Happy Psychic Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the Happy Psychic Podcast. I'm your host, your guiding light, Gemma Lonsdale, and it is very good to have you again for another week. Before we get to the podcast itself, I had a few things that I wanted to run through, first of all. So I'm currently working on my UK tour. The first date is 17th of March in Newcastle. And the venue that we are using in Newcastle is um, the Common Room, which is a lovely venue near the train station. And the second venue that we have organised is the 22nd of April in Edinburgh in the Grass Market Centre, um, which is in central Edinburgh. It's close to the, um, the castle. And the other dates we're hoping to get finalised include Manchester, London and Bristol. And then we'll start organising the Irish tour. And I'm also very, very eager to get across to the States as well. But I just don't know exactly when the US tour is going to happen. However, what I would say is if you are interested in coming to see me, definitely subscribe to my newsletter. The link is in the information below. It's um, my website, which is gemmalonsdale.gu forward slash subscribe and you'll be able to get notifications of any dates and things that come out okay another point that I wanted to mention as well was about the development group so I have a development group on Facebook which is really growing in size and you know what I'm I'm so excited to see people join who you know people who are on their journey a little bit and who have some experience in this some really experienced people who are so sharp and then also people who are at the start of their journey so I'm very excited to see people really taking part and I know it can be a bit nerve-wracking whenever you're first getting involved in spiritualism or you're first trying to put yourself out there you know it can be quite um nerve-wracking you know commenting on somebody or getting the information wrong or the thoughts of getting the information wrong but it is a very very welcome space you know it's a very nurturing space so nobody should be afraid of getting anything wrong there you know there is no such thing as wrong information it's always just a learning curve and a chance to learn and improve so if you're not a member of the group but you're interested in developing or really want to have like a a place where you can practice and practice different um different sets of skills then the development group is a really good place for you to start so the link is in the notes below as well but if you search for Gemma Lonsdale development group on Facebook then it will bring it up and you would be very very welcome to join. I also am working on finalizing some of the paid programs and workshops as well. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is teaching and helping people really develop their spiritual connection and develop their mediumship and their gifts so the paid programs I am a bit delayed <laughs> Um, everything is running just a little bit ha- behind schedule at the minute with me, which um, is unfortunate. I just have been so, so busy that it's been challenging to get the dates and everything planned in for the tour. So I, I have recruited somebody. I, I have an assistant that's now supporting me with that. So it's really being able to um, get a load of that off my plate. And so I can focus on the things that I love to do, which is doing readings, the touring, the podcast and the teaching. So I am getting the paid programs and workshops um, started to be finalized. So hopefully within the next coming weeks, there's going to be some dates scheduled for those as well. They're all going to be held on Zoom. So everything is going to be held online for those at the minute. However, there might be some um, random face-to-face ones that are sort of put in there at a later stage. But if you want to receive any updates about things like that as well, then again, subscribe to my newsletter and um, any dates for things will always be put in there when it's been scheduled and sent out as well. Some of you might be aware that I, I also have an Oracle deck that is in the works. Now, the Oracle deck, I was initially hoping that it would be um, released by the start of this year. So we're a little bit delayed with the artwork. I just want to make sure that the artwork is exact I have an amazing designer that's working on the cards and he is um he's an illustrator actually and the work that he has done is amazing and I have shared a few examples of those on social media but again if you want to receive any more updates on the oracle deck and when it's going to be available and where it's going to be available and see some snippets of like its progress as well along the way then definitely subscribe to the newsletter too 
don't forget to follow me on social media. The main place that you can find me is on TikTok, followed by Instagram. And I have just reopened my Facebook page. It's not really a focus for me. However, with having the development group and everything on Facebook, it does make sense to have that. Um, and you can find me, it's Gemma Lonsdale Guru across all of the social media platforms that I use. Um, so yes, if you're not following me, get following me on there. With this week's podcast, I really was keen to share some wisdom with you from spirit. And this was triggered from my um, rather emotional weekend. <laughs> so my daughter shares time across both me and her dad. So we co-parent and I like to think that we co-parent, you know, very, very well. Um, and this week I had the joy of having her with me for the whole weekend because we usually share her across the weekend and Sunday she would be at her dad's. And actually this week um, she was with me and we decided to have a girl's day and we booked tickets for the cinema. So Titanic, which is one of her favourite films, was um, it's in the cinema at the minute. And so we, we decided we would get the posh seats at the cinema. We had, you know, some food, we got some popcorn and we watched Titanic and it was probably the first time that I have sat and watched Titanic really from start to finish. And what a tearjerker. <laughs> oh, honestly, I wish that I'd had more tissues there. I think on one aspect of it, it's that star-crossed lover syndrome and it's just so touching, I think, to see the depth of love between the two main characters. However, as we really got towards the end and we are getting more towards the scene where the ship has crashed um it's hit the iceberg and carnage is starting to really occur and people are frightened and fearful it was very um i think that anybody who's an empath can really relate to feeling emotions and things like that. And definitely as my gifts have amplified and my vibration has increased, I feel that so much more intensely. And sometimes I do feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. However, whenever I was watching this movie, it was very, very shocking just how much I was feeling the fear. And I realized that these were actors. However, this was a real life situation that happened. You know, this wasn't just something fictitious that James Cameron had, you know, purchased a screenplay for and, and produced it. This is something that, you know, actually happened. It was based on a real life situation. So I I, I was really feeling the fear, I believe, that the, the passengers on board would have been feeling at that time. It really got me to um, thinking about grief. And the hardships that we experience in this life, you know, my daughter's friend on Sunday as well, just as we were going into the cinema, um, unfortunately had to, she just found out that they were going to have to put the family dog down because he had cancer and had been really unwell. So th there was a lot of different emotions and things around death and hardship that were starting to come to the surface. And it really got me wondering about, well, what, what is the purpose of life? Why are we here? And it's a question I know that so many people have asked themselves over the years and over the lifetimes. And I'm not sure that I can give you a precise, definitive response. However, what I can deliver is some insight from spirit in the hopes that I can enlighten you, my guest, a little bit and give you some hope and faith that this all does serve a purpose and that there is a bigger picture really at play here. And we're not sent here to be tortured or, you know, life on earth isn't supposed to be endured. That's not the purpose of it. Whenever I suppose whenever I think of the hardships, first of all, I always remind myself that the hardships are something that have to be um, endured in a respect. But there's always glimmers of hope within a hardship. You know, whenever we're having a, a terrible thing happen to us or a series of terrible things happen to us, which sometimes it seems there's always laughter in between things you know even if mass war was to break out for us you know that that doesn't mean that life is over and that we may as well just go and jump off a bridge you know there would be times of laughter lots of laughter and amongst those times as well and yes it brings with it grief 
But the positives of that are also to bring people closer together, to create new dynamics, to create new ways of communicating, to create new support networks, to bring people closer together, improve the communication, improve how we work together, improve how we eat, improve how we use the land, improve you know how we support our family members or our neighbours, and improve how we um. I suppose how we function and feel about ourselves really as well because one of the things whenever we're going through hardships is that it forces us to have some internal reflection and whenever we are feeling well whenever we are going through something particularly challenging that is typically when we grow the most as people okay and I'm not saying that we don't grow through the other times and through the happy times you know we do growth growth is always a constant it's always happening however it is through the challenges that we tend to make the biggest leaps forward when it comes to our self-growth okay so I try to remind myself that whenever there is a challenge that I'm experiencing you know and we've all had our own challenges you know it's not a competition but you know cancer my breast cancer was one of the big challenges that I experienced twice um and it's actually through that that I learned an awful lot about myself and I really deepened my connection with spirit and in order to do that I really had to deepen the connection that I had with myself and I can remember saying to someone not long after my diagnosis that cancer in many respects was a blessing and I can remember the look of confusion on their face however for me it really was because without that happening I wouldn't really have changed to the level that I did you know it really did force me to evaluate a lot of areas of my life and my romantic life and the relationships that I had had over the years how I focused so much on the material world and my corporate career that I had at the time So it did bring about a lot of positive change for me. And yes, it was hard, but boy, did I grow. Okay, so I I always try to remind myself and try to, um, I suppose, educate and inspire and give hope to others that actually this is this is a blessing in disguise. You know, this is a gift from the universe because you're giving that you're being given the chance to grow. And whenever we think of the purpose of why we're here, the overarching reason is about growth we come here to learn and right now I'm actually being shown a classroom and there's a teacher at the front of the classroom and we're giving all these different assignments to come here to experience the earth is what I'm being told and you know some will have more struggles or difficulties than others But I'm also being shown that that's an option. You know, it's something that we can sort of select ourselves for. You know, if you're a stronger person, you know, a stronger soul, a stronger spirit. Before you incarnated here, maybe you decided, you know what? Yes, I want to, you know, have all of these bad things happen to me because I want to learn what it's like to overcome them. And then I want to use those to inspire other people. So there is an aspect of it where we have almost designed parts of our life before we have actually come here um but we we do come here to learn it's all about soul growth it's all about having experiences and learning things for ourselves so we can experience that self-growth but then also helping other people along the way and accepting the help in return whenever we need it you know where we were never expected to come here to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders and you know i Personally, I I have had problems in the past when it comes to accepting help from people. You know, I feel like I'm such a determined, proud person that I must do this by myself. But that wasn't the way that you know, God created or that, you know, it's not really the way that this was created, whether you believe in God or not. That's not the purpose of this place. It's not for us to come here and be completely self-sufficient and, you know, endure and go through the hardships and the struggles and, you know, hate everything and everyone and um, and then finish. That's not really the, the purpose. You know, we, we were supposed to be able to help, accept help from others and then help other people as well on their journey. And whenever I was watching Titanic and I was getting very emotional and very teary and my mascara was running and I was starting to panic a little bit about walking out of the cinema with my panda eyes, I really did start to think about the deeper questions around grief and loss. And 
how much easier for me that I find it knowing that there is something else and I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that life continues because of the experiences that I have with spirit and that could be information and experiences that I have had directly regarding myself but also the information and the evidence that I bring through for other people as well and how I've encapsulated their person or the situation in their life or you know I've helped on a psychic detection case or you know something like that and it's just incredible to know that there was something that's much bigger than us you know we on earth are just a small fragment of what is there and what is available and my mind is blown by that because I think you know whenever we are on earth we we're we just don't have the comprehension of the full scale of what else there is and the other types of energies and beings that you know, that exist out there and the other realms, you know, it's just, we just don't have the comprehension. It is physically impossible for us in our human form to comprehend these things. You know, whenever we're in spirit, however, I'm told that that is very, very different and we can have access to much more knowledge. However, I'm also being told that in our spirit form, we don't get access to all of the knowledge. My guide is just showing me here a rule book what she's actually showing me is a rule book for different realms. If we if we think of like different realms or different areas or different areas of specialism or different, could be different planets, different, it's just different. She's showing me different things. She has used the term realms. Um, and what she has said is that these are like the rules and regulations. She has shown me I need to sign and give a signature. So I've done that. And she is taking me off somewhere different. This is so amazing. Now, I have actually visited somewhere like this previously. Um, whenever I I was doing a workshop, actually, and this is one of the things that actually had come up with a, with a few of the people that were participating in the workshop. And it turned out that we were all visiting the same realm unknowingly, <laughs> I might add. But the information that we were sharing was so similar about we, what we were seeing. Um, but where she's actually brought me to is it's like somewhere out of a fairy tale. And I'm seeing unicorns, magic. She's telling me about magic occurs. Um, she's showing me, a. I can see like a, a wizard or a sorcerer. It looks like Merlin from The Sword and the Stone. And he's sort of over this cauldron and he's and just seeing sparkles come out just exactly like a kid's cartoon and it does things like this do make me really think well all of these things within folklore unicorns things like that somebody maybe has visited another realm or maybe you know the person that came up with the idea for a particular disney movie or um, a particular uh fairy tale maybe they visited another realm as well or maybe it was information that was given to them by somebody who had visited another realm and this is where the idea came from so i think from the experiences that i have held with um, that i've had with spirit i i've just come to the conclusion that nothing is off the table i wouldn't rule anything out at this stage in terms of what else is out there and you know, if somebody was to ask me, well, do you believe in unicorns? I honestly would say that I think that there's a possibility that they could exist somewhere. Um, I think that there's a strong chance. I, I just, nothing is off the table for me now. However, when she brings me here, she's just saying about a lot of magic occurs. Now, my spiritual self that I'm seeing in this realm has went to grab a mushroom um, and she's saying, don't touch magic mushrooms. Oh God. <laughs> oh dear I've just realized the uh the, the comical aspect of that whenever spirit bring information through and um, I'm just going up a set of stairs here and she's asked for my signature again and she's um taking me somewhere different and whenever she's taking me here it's just sharks I can see the ocean and there's um lots of different sharks here she's actually said that this is where creation occurred She's actually saying about the forming of different species happening here. And then about them being delivered to Earth in some way. Isn't that fascinating? And then she said things are allowed to evolve, like allowed to evolve. But it's almost as though creation happens in this 
specific space it's like the first creations occur and then they're delivered to earth um or to other places so this is just fascinating i have never i've never seen this before she's never brought me here before i'm just i'm just absolutely amazed she's just said that we're returning now so that was just a, a little bit of a taster session but yeah that's absolutely fascinating i'm just my mind is blown mind is absolutely blown however going back to the question you know our purpose there is a bigger picture we don't know what that bigger picture is. As we've just been given a taster, there is a lot more going on than what we're aware of in our human form. She has just said that this is an illusion. So I, I often think of it, well, the earth is the physical world and then the rest are the illusions. Not that they're illusions necessarily, but that they're, you know, they're different realms. And I can visit the different realms in my head. I can go different places. I can meet with different people, different spiritual people. And I know from experience that whenever we're in spirit form, we can create our reality very, very quickly. Like manifestations are instant. You know, one of the things that I can remember was whenever I was at the start of my journey with Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park and he had shown me him on a sun lounger one minute and then next minute he was at a skate park and I was like how can you do that so quickly and he explained that it's just instant and you can just change your mind instantly as well apologies I'm just getting distracted here because there was somebody that has just come through to me and I can't remember his name I just had a man appear to me and I have connected with this man before. He is another celebrity. He was an actor. I can't remember his name, but I've only connected to him a few times. And it was whenever I first connected to Chester Bennington, I had connected to him. And I had also connected to Paul Walker from The Fast and Furious on a few occasions. And them two were together. So I don't know whether they had some kind of a connection on the earth that is then carried over into the spirit realm. But I'm just going to take a minute and just figure out who he is because I can't remember his name. OK, so it's um, Bill Paxton is the man who has stepped forward. So I remember he was in Titanic, which might be why he has um, decided to step forward. But as he's coming through to me, like I can just see him very, very clearly. He, I can see his face. So that's how I knew who he was. And he is actually coming through with a message to deliver. But I, I connected to him, I think maybe only one or two times. So I didn't have a particularly strong connection with him, not in comparison to Chester Bennington, for example, who I was with consistently for a while. And George Michael, actually, I connected to George Michael quite a few times and his energy was amazing. But Bill Paxton has stepped forward. He's actually coming through with a message and it is a, a future vision. He's coming through with a prediction. Bill Paxton is coming through with a prediction. Whenever he's showing me the future, I don't know how far we're going into the future here, but the information that he's actually showing me is that there is a disaster that's set to occur, which is quite unfortunate. And what he is showing me is a ship, but he's showing me a ship that's smaller than the Titanic, I think. Um, I'm not seeing something that's as large as the Titanic. I just wanted to clarify that. And he is showing me something that isn't as large as the Titanic. And what he has said is about a cruise ship. So it's, um, I know it's carrying passengers aboard and I'm seeing passengers, you know, boarding. What he's showing me is some errors of judgment in the construction. And he's looking underneath the ship or in the internal parts of the ship. And he said that it's not sufficient. And it's not being checked thoroughly. Now, I don't know if this is a ship that is on her maiden voyage or if it's something that has occurred previously where, you know, she's been used and has been in circulation. I'm not sure. However, what he is showing me is that um, there is something that needs to be looked at that hasn't been looked at. So they're confident that this has, is set to occur. When he's drawing me to the health and safety measures, he has said that they're not sufficient, okay? So I know that there's something there where health and safety hasn't maybe been properly adhered to, okay? So that's one thing that he is drawing me to. And he's just said that that's sufficient in 
information. The one thing he's not telling me is the outcome of this and if there's going to be passengers abo aboard the ship or if it's going to happen when the ship is docked. He's not making that clear, but he is showing me the ship touching the ground. So I would be submerged. I would be expecting that it would either be fully submerged and it would sink or there will be something happen where it is closer to shore perhaps or in a shallower part of the ocean he's not really making that clear all i'm saying is that it will sink okay and i don't know if that's going to be in the darkest you know depths of the ocean or if it's going to be closer but he has shown me that that is set to occur so it's not going to be as well i don't want to I don't want to make any more predictions on it, really. I think I've given sufficient information. And um, on a lighter note, he his energy is very, very good. <laughs> um, for anybody who knows Bill Paxton, I have no idea what his personality was in the real world, but he's definitely coming through as a bit of a joker. Um, although he said, no, not so much. Maybe it's just on this occasion because he has said, no, not so much of a... Not much of a joker you know he said he you know he could be humorous on occasion but it wasn't like a constant a constant thing with him and um what he's actually showing is um he's putting his uh <laughs> he's putting his arm around me so for anybody that's watching this on youtube um i'm seeing him coming in around me here he's just give me a kiss on the cheek if you're able to see spirit, you might see that actually happen. But he's got a phone and he's taking a selfie of us. The first time he took it, going to have a pussycat join us here. The first time that he took the photo, um, he didn't like it and he started to pick his teeth. It was like there was something, um, there was food or something like that stuck in his teeth. Sorry about that. Um. And then when he wanted to take it again, he was worried about his chins and the angles and trying to get a perfection. And I feel like I'm I'm having to look up to the sky for this for this selfie. Um, but it's very, very interesting. It would be very interesting to see if you were able to see him on screen while I'm talking through that. So I look forward to your feedback with that. But he just He's just said that he's pleased to have the acknowledgement. So I know that he's quite pleased to have had the chance to be here and to have been included, I guess, and mentioned and brought up within the podcast. Um, and he wanted to deliver the prediction, he has said. So now he's done that, he's um he's uh, going to return. Um and he said he's just swung a golf club there and he said about some practice sessions. So I know he's going to practice his golf swing now and uh manifest his reality of you know his favorite golf course probably. However, there is definitely something much larger. I think that that is that has come out of today. You know, there is something that is much larger there that we just do not have full comprehension of. So our purpose is to come here and learn and help others so it's all about soul growth it's all about honestly this cat go away pussy cat oh. <laughs> so it's all about soul growth it's all about developing as as a soul and as a being not just a human and I think whenever we think of growth we often think of a new car a bigger bank balance you know a new job a bigger house rather than actually thinking of the the soul growth that we can experience, you know, the the um better attitude, positive mindset. Okay, so there you go. And I, I just appreciate you coming and, and listening today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you're able to, please rate the show or leave feedback. It would be much appreciated. You can find me on the social channels, TikTok being the most used, by searching for Gemma Lonsdale Guru. If you'd like to book a private reading or inquire about coaching or having me speak at your event, then visit www.gemmalonsdale.guru. You can also join my development group on Facebook by searching Gemma Lonsdale Development Group. 